So I really enjoy uh, doing glazes where I'm where you get a real gooey, runny effect, and you have multiple colors. And to do that, I often will dip multiple glazes on top of each other. And I've always wondered, does it really matter what the order is, or is it more about thickness and method and whether or not the shoulder is going to slow things down? So I have four little bottles here. They all have a white liner inside, white liner glaze, and I have them labeled one, two, three, four, so I can make sense later of what is what. And I have three glazes I want to put on these. I have a Chun Seafoam, I have a Floating Blue, and I have a really white, white, what I call a Kitchen White, heavily Zirka packs. And on top of those, I want to do a little rim dip of uh, Ashley's Rivulet, an ash glaze that'll make them run. So I want to do them in three different orders. And then I'm going to rim dip all of them at the end in a little bit of this Ashley's Rivulet. And I have a fourth bottle to see whether or not that Ashley's Rivulet is going to uh, act any different if I put that on first and put the other glazes on top. So not sure what, I'm, what order I'm going to do on top of this one, but this will be kind of an additional experiment. But I'm going to do three glazes and I'm going to put them on in a different order. And we're going to see if they look different in the end. So, bottle number one, glaze one, that's a Chun Sea Foam. Bottle number two, floating blue as the first glaze. Bottle number three, Zirkle Packs White for the base layer. And then here's number four, the Ashley's Rivulet on the, for the first coat, these three. I'll put it on as the very last on the rim, but this one will be underneath everything, and we'll see if that matters. So I'm going to let these dry off a little bit, and then I'll recoat. All right, so for a second coat, so there's floating blue over sea foam. You can see I'm going to leave a little gap in between each layer, and I have I've done similar type of experiments, not exactly like this. Whether I uh, and it seems to make a difference whether I don't dip them all the way or I put all three or four coats, whatever I'm doing, down to the same line. And I think that's because, or my theory is that it kind of gets moving like a, like a wave of water. And when you leave a little gap like that, uh, it seems like you can see the color more. If you have all three or four, whatever you're going to put on, down to the same level, they commingle a little, little bit more. So hopefully this gives us a little more variegation but we'll see. Okay, so there's number two, floating blue with the Zircopax white as a second coat. Bottle number three. So there's sea foam over the Zircopax white. And I think I'm going to take this bottle and I'm going to do it is the same as this. This will just have uh, the rivulet as a rim dip at the end and this will have it at the beginning, but otherwise uh, I'll do them the same. So the next thing I want to put on this is white as well. So there's number four with the white on top. Now I'm going to let these dry off for a little bit and we'll do the next round of dips. Okay, dip number three. Starting with this one, I'm going to put white on next. So there's bottle number one with the third coat. Bottle number two, now I'm going to put sea foam on top of this one. So I want to show you here. Uh, this is the sea foam as our third dip. You can tell it's starting to get really goopy around the rim. That's okay. We want this to, to kind of run and flow. But you see here this, this drip, you know, when you, you take it out of the bucket, you kind of hold it. I don't, I don't want the drip to run down the bottle top. If I wasn't doing a multiple coat uh, setup here, I would take a sponge and I would carefully knock off that drip. But uh, because we have different layers, I'm not 100% sure that that drip is just the sea foam. I don't want to mess up the rim, so I don't touch them when I'm doing this kind of layering. Just let it let it be what it wants to be. So that's bottle number two. Bottle number three is going to need floating blue. So there's bottle number three. Now for this one, I need to get sea foam because we want to do these two the same. So last dip for each of these, we're going to put Ashley's Rivulet on the rim of these three and then this one needs floating blue to complete it. So I'll do that right now. 
So there you are. I'll let those dry off. We'll put them in the kiln. We'll fire tonight and tomorrow we'll see what happened. And here they are done. So you can see how differently they turned out. I mean overall they, they're similar but <clears throat> so we have number one versus number two. Like this to me looks so much better and you can just tell that the that rivulet glaze I put on the top reacts differently to the seafoam than it does to the floating blue. And both are really cool. Number three also has that kind of runniness on it. And then four. So remember these two were the ones that were exactly the same. The only difference being this had the the ash glaze on the, uh, the very first layer and this had it on the top. And if you if you look closely you can see kind of like a kind of like a wave moving down picking up different glazes. And for me what I really want is is variegation is kind of a mottled streaky would be great. I brought some examples kind of in the same color palette. See what I mean? How the glaze can kind of pick up another layer and move along, almost like the color rides in the front of the surf coming up onto the beach, so to speak. You know. So these were these were not applied in a streaky fashion. They were all dipped. I want to say five different colors. On this one, you can see it almost started to crawl. But here's another one. I mean, it can be pretty wild really close to the camera here. Again, just figuring out the right layering combo where I really like this white coming up. I don't like it being too homogenous. I like it when it's kind of, uh, you know, different, different swirling colors, almost like a marble or something. But So, you can get these sort of glaze combinations simply by figuring out which combination works best. Uh, this would have looked a lot different had I put a white body on the on the pot first. This is raw, there's no glaze here. And I wanted it that way just in case it started running like mad it would it would hit that and slow down versus giving a base coat of some color first. But I like them all. But if this was if I had to pick a winner, I'd like this one the best, and probably this one second, third, fourth. So, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think.